Merced Shakespeare Fest presents William Shakespeare's The Tempest, a four-part audio drama directed by Karen Heidelbach and recorded safely and remotely by a cast of talented actors from all across the United States, featuring original music by Garen Norquist. And now, Merced Shakespeare Fest presents The Tempest. Episode 4 Thy thoughts I cleave to. What's thy pleasure? Spirit, we must prepare to meet with Caliban. Aye, my mistress. When I presented Ceres, I thought to have told thee of it, but I feared lest I might anger thee. Say again, where didst thou leave these varlets? I told you, madam. They were red hot with drinking, so fond of valor that they smote the air for breathing in their faces, bid the ground for kissing of their feet, yet always bending toward their project. Then I beat my tabor, at which, like unbacked colts, they pricked their ears, advanced their eyelids, lifted up their noses as they smelt music. So. I charmed their ears, that calf-like they, my lowing, followed through toothed briars, sharp furzes, pricking goss and thorns, which entered their frail shins. <laughs> At last I left them in the filthy mantled pool beyond yourself. This was well done, my bird. <laughs> Thy shape invisible retain thou still. The trumpery in my house. Go bring it hither, for stale to catch these thieves. I go, I go. A devil, a born devil, on whose nature nurture can never stick, on whom my pains humanely taken all, all lost, quite lost, and as with H's body uglier grows, so his mind cankers. I will plague them all, even to roaring. Ariel re-enters with glistening apparel and with Prospera remains invisible to the soaked Caliban, Stefano, and Trinculo, who follow closely, whispering and trying to remain unseen. Come, I them on this line. <laughs> Pray you, tread softly that the blind mole may not hear a foot fall. We now are near herself. Monster, your fairy, which you say is a harmless fairy, has done little better than played the jack with us. Monster, I do smell all horse piss, at which my nose is in great indignation. So is mine. Do you hear, monster? If I should take a displeasure against you, look you. Thou wert but a lost monster. Good my lord, give me thy favor still. Be patient. For the prize I'll bring thee to shall hoodwink this mischance. Therefore, speak softly. All's hushed as midnight yet. Ay, but to lose our bottles in the pool. There is not only disgrace and dishonor in that monster, but an infinite loss. That's more to me than my wedding. Yes, this is your harmless fairy monster. I will fetch off my bottle, though I be o'er ears for my labor. Prithee, my king, be quiet. Seest thou here? This is the mouth of the cell. No noise and enter. Do that good mischief, which may make this island thine own forever, and I, thy Caliban, for I, thy footlicker. Give me thy hand. I do begin to have bloody thoughts. Oh, King Stefano, O oh, peer, O oh, worthy Stefano, look what a wardrobe here is for thee. 
Let it alone, thou fool. It is but trash. Oh, ho, ho, monster. We know what belongs to a frippery. Oh, King Stefano. Put off that gown, Trinculo. By this hand, I'll have that gown. Thy grace shall have it. The dropsy drown this fool eye. What do you mean to dote on such a luggage? Let's alone and do the murder first. If she awake, from toe to crown, she'll fill our skins with peaches. Make a strange stuff. Be you quiet, monster. Mr. Slime, is this not my jerkin? Now is the jerkin under the line. Now, Jerkin, you are like to lose your hair and prove a bald Jerkin. Oh, do, do. We steal by line and level, and like your grace. <laughs> I thank thee for that jest. Here's a garment for it, which shall not go unrewarded while I am king of this country. Monster, come, put some lime upon your fingers, and away with the rest. I will have none on it. We shall lose our time, and all be turned into barnacles, or to apes with foreheads villainous low. Monster, lay to your fingers. Help to bear this away where my hogshead of wine is, or I'll turn you out of the kingdom. Go to, carry this. And this? I and this. Prospera and Ariel set the spirits of hounds on Caliban, Stefano, and Trinculo. Hey, Mountain Hare! Tyrant! 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 There! Hark! Hark! Caliban, Stefano, and Trinculo run away in distress, hounded by the spirits. charge my goblins that they grind their joints with dry convulsions, shorten up their sinews with aged cramps, and more pinch-spotted make them than pard or cat of mountain. Hark! They roar! Let them be hunted soundly! At this hour lie at my mercy all mine enemies. Shortly shall all my labors end, and thou shalt have the air at freedom. For follow and do me service. Prospera and Ariel go into the camp to prepare. Act 5, Scene 1. By the camp, Prospera and Ariel ready themselves. Prospera dons her magic robe. Now does my project gather to a head. My charms crack not, my spirits obey, and time goes upright with his carriage. How's the day? On the sixth hour, at which time, my lady, you said our work should cease. I did say so when I first raised the tempest. Say, my spirit, how fares the king and his followers? Confined together in the same fashion as you gave in charge, just as you left them. All prisoners, ma'am, in the lime grove which weather fends your cell, they cannot budge till your release. The king, his brother, and yours abide all three distracted, and the remainder mourning over them, rimful of sorrow and dismay. But chiefly, him that you termed, madam, the good old Lord Gonzalo, his tears run down his beard like winter's drops from eve the reeds. Your charm works so strongly in him that if you now beheld them, your affections would become tender. Dost thou think so, spirit? Mine would, lady, were I human. And mine shall, as thou which art but air, a touch, a feeling of their afflictions, and shall not myself one of their kind that relish all as sharply, passion as they be kindlier moved than thou art. Though with their high wrongs I am struck to the quick, yet with my nobler reason against my fury do I take part. The rarer action is in virtue than in vengeance. They being penitent, 
The sole drift of my purpose doth extend not a frown further. Go release them, Ariel. My charms I'll break, their senses I'll restore, and they shall be themselves. Hmm. I'll fetch them, madam. Ye elves of hill, brooks, standing lakes and groves, and ye that on the sands with printless foot do chase the ebbing Neptune, and do fly him when he comes back. You demi-puppets, that by moonshine do the green sour ringlets make, whereof the you not bites. And you, whose pastime is to make midnight mushrooms, that rejoice to hear the solemn curfew, by whose aid, weak masters though ye be, I have bedimmed the noontide sun, called forth the mutinous winds, and twixt the green sea and the azure walled set roaring war. To the dread rattling thunder have I given fire and rifted Jove's stout oak with his own bolt. The strong base promontory have I made shake, and by the spurs plucked up the pine and cedar. Graves at my command have waked their sleepers, oaked and let them forth by my so potent art. But this rough magic I here abjure, and when I have required some heavenly music, which even now I do, to work mine end upon their senses that this airy charm is for. I'll break my staff, bury it certain fathoms in the earth, and deeper than did ever plummet sound, I'll drown my book. Ariel returns followed by the castaways, seemingly under a charm. Alonzo, attended by Gonzalo, Sebastian, Antonio, Adriana, all gather around Prospera in a circle. Prospera speaks. A solemn air and the best comforter to an unsettled fancy cure thy brains. Now useless, boiled within thy skull. There stand, for you are spell stopped. Holy Gonzalo, honorable man, mine eyes, even sociable to the show of thine, fall fallowly drops. The charm dissolves apace, and as the morning steals upon the night, melting the darkness, so their rising senses begin to chase the ignorant fumes that mantle their clearer reason. Oh, good Gonzalo, my true preserver, and a loyal sir to her are you followest. I will pay thy graces home both in word and deed. Most cruelly didst thou, Alonso, use me and my daughter. Thy brother was a furtherer in the act. Thou art pinched fort now, Sebastian. Flesh and blood, you brother mine, that entertained ambition, expelled remorse and nature, who, with Sebastian, whose inward pinches therefore are most strong, would here have killed your king. I do forgive thee, unnatural though thou art. Their understanding begins to swell and the approaching tide will shortly fill the reasonable shore that now lies foul and muddy. Not one of them that yet looks on me, or would know me, Ariel. Fetch me the hat and rapier in my cell. I will disgrace me and myself present as I was sometime Milan. Quickly, spirit, thou shalt ere long be free. Ariel quickly does as told and helps to clothe Prospera in her Milan robes. Where the bee 
socks, there's a guy in a cowslip's bell. I lie there, I couch when I'll do cry on the bat's back. I do fly after summer. <laughs> merrily, merrily, merrily shall I live now under the blossom that hangs on the That's my dainty Ariel. I shall miss thee, but yet thou shalt have freedom. So, 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 to the king's ship, invisible as thou art, there shalt thou find the mariners asleep under the hatches. The master and the boatswain being awake, enforce them to this place, and presently, I prithee. I drink the air before me, and return, or else your pulse twice beat. All torment, trouble, wonder, and amazement inhabits here. Some heavenly power guide us out of this fearful country. Behold, Sir King, the wronged ruler of Milan, Prospera. For more assurance that a living noble does now speak to thee, I embrace thy body. And to thee and thy company, I bid a hearty welcome. Whether thou beest she or no, or some enchanted trifle to abuse me, as late I have been, I not know. Thy pulse beats as of flesh and blood, and since I saw thee, the affliction of my mind amends, with which I fear a madness held me. This must crave, and if this be at all a most strange story, Thy dukedom I resign and do entreat, thou pardon me my wrongs. But how should Prosper be living and be here? First, noble friend, let me embrace thine age, whose honor cannot be measured or confined. Whether this be or be not, I'll not swear. You do yet taste some subtleties of the isle that will not let you believe things certain. Welcome, my friends all. Prospera speaks quietly aside to Sebastian and Antonio. But you, my brace of lords, were I so minded I here could pluck his highness's frown upon you and justify you traitors. At this time, I will tell no tales. The devil speaks in her. No. For you. Most wicked sir, whom to call brother would even infect my mouth. I do forgive thy rankest fault, all of them. And require my dukedom of thee, which perforce I know thou must restore. If thou beest prosper, give us particulars of thy preservation, how thou hast met us here, who three hours since were wrecked upon this shore, where I have lost, how sharp the point of this remembrance is, my dear son, Ferdinand. I am woe for it, sir. Irreparable is the loss, and patience says it is past her cure. I rather think you have not sought her help, of whose soft grace for the like loss I have a sovereign aid and rest myself content. You the like loss. As great to me as late, and supportable to make the dear loss, if I means much weaker than you may call to comfort you, for I have lost my daughter. A daughter? Oh, heavens, that they were living both in Naples, the king and queen there. That they were, I wish myself, were mudded in that oozy bed where my son lies. When did you lose your daughter? In this last tempest. I perceive these lords at this encounter do so much admire that they devour their reason and scarce think their eyes do offices of truth. Their words are natural breath. But 
Howsoever you have been dazzled from your senses, know for certain that I am Prospera, and that very noble which was thrust forth of Milan, most strangely upon the shore where you were wrecked was landed, to be the noble on it. No more yet of this, for it is a chronicle of day by day, not a relation for breakfast, nor befitting this first meeting. Welcome, sir. This sells my court. Here have I few attendants and subjects, none abroad. Pray you, look in. My dukedom, since you have given me again, I will requite you with as good a thing. At least bring forth a wonder to content you as much as me, my dukedom. Upon entering Prospera's camp, Alonso sees a vision of his son Ferdinand and Miranda playing chess together. Sweet Lord, you play me false. Oh, my dearest love, I would not for the world. Yes, for a score of kingdoms you should wrangle. And yet I would call it fair play. If this prove a vision of the island, one dear son shall I twice lose. A most high miracle. Though the seas threaten, they are merciful. I have cursed them without cause. Ferdinand recognizes his father and kneels at his feet. Now all the blessings of a glad father compass thee about. Arise and say how thou camest here. Oh, wonder! How many goodly creatures are there here? How beauteous mankind is. Oh, brave new world that has such people in it. Tis new to thee. <laughs> what is this maid with whom thou wast at play? Your eldest acquaintance cannot be three hours. Is she the goddess that hath severed us and brought us thus together? <laughs> Sir, she is mortal, but by immortal providence she's mine. I chose her when I could not ask my father for his advice, nor thought I had one. She is daughter to this famous nobility of Milan, of whom so often I have heard renown, but never saw before, of whom I have received a second life, and second mother this lady makes her to me. And I her father. But oh, how oddly will it sound that I must ask my child forgiveness. There, sir, stop. Let us not burthen our remembrance with the heaviness that's gone. I have inly wept, or should have spoke ere this. Look down, you God, and on this couple drop a blessed crown. For it is you that have chucked forth the way which brought us hither. I say amen, Gonzalo. Oh, rejoice beyond the common joy and set it down with gold on lasting pillars. In one voyage did Claribel her husband find a Tunis, and Ferdinand, her brother, found a wife where he himself was lost. Prospera, her old home in a poor isle, and all of our sarcells, when no man was his own. Ferdinand and Miranda, give me your hands. Let grief and sorrow still embrace his heart that doth not wish you joy. Be it so. Amen. Ariel returns with the boatmaster and Boson following along amazedly. Gonzalo speaks to the Boson. Oh, look, sir, look, sir. Here is more of us. I prophesied. If a gallows were on land, this fellow could not drown. Now, blasphemy, that surest grace overboard, not an oath on shore? Hast thou no mouth, my land? What is the news? Madam, all this service have I done since I went. My tricksy spirit. These are not natural events. They strengthen from strange to stranger. Say, how came you hither?
Wast well done? Bravely, my diligence. Thou shalt be free. <sighs> this is as strange a maze as e'er men trod, and there is in this business more than nature was ever conduct of. Some oracle must rectify our knowledge. Sir, my liege, do not infest your mind with beating on the strangeness of this business. At picked leisure, which shall be shortly, single I'll resolve you, which to you shall seem probable, of every these happened accidents. Till when, be cheerful, and think of each thing well. Come hither, spirit, set Caliban and his companions free. Untie the spell. How fares my gracious sir? There are yet missing of your company some few odd lads that you remember not. Ariel re-enters, driving in Caliban, Stefano, and Trinculo in their stolen clothing. Every man ship for all the rest, and let no man take care for himself. For all is but fortune. Garagio, bully monster, Garagio! If these be true spies which I wear in my head, here's a goodly sight. Oh, Cetibus, these be brave spirits indeed. How fine my mistress is. I'm afraid she will chastise me. Ha <laughs> ha! What things are these, my lord Antonio? Will money buy him? Very like. One of them is a plain fish and no doubt marketable. Mark but the badges of these fools, my lords, then say if they be true. This misshapen knave, his mother was a witch, and one so strong that could control the moon. It flows and ebbs, and deal in her command without her power. These three have robbed me, and this demi-devil, for he's a bastard one, had plotted with them to take my life. Two of these fellows you must know and own. This thing of darkness I acknowledge mine. I shall be pinched to death. Is not this Stefano, my drunken butler? He is drunk now. Where had he wine? And Trinculo is reeling ripe. Where should they find this grand liquor that hath gilded him? How camest thou in this pickle? I have been in such a pickle since I saw you last that, I fear me, will never out my bones. I shall not fear fly-blowing. <laughs> Why, how now, Stefano? Oh, touch me not. Uh, I am not Stefano, but a cramp. You'd be king of the isle, sirrah. I should have been a sore one, then. This is a strange thing, as e'er I looked on. Alonzo raises a finger to point at Caliban. He is as disproportioned in his manners as in his shape. Go, sirrah, to my cell. Take with you your companions. As you look to have my pardon, trim it handsomely. Aye, that I will, and I'll be wise hereafter and seek for grace. What a thrice double ass was I! To take this drunkard for a god and worship this dull fool. Go to, away. Hence, and bestow your luggage where you found it. Or stole it, rather. Caliban, Stefano, and Trinculo stumble back into Prospera's cell. Sir, I invite your highness and your train to my poor cell, where you shall take your rest for this one night which part of it I'll waste with such discourse as I not doubt shall make it go quick away, the story of my life and the particular accidents gone by since I came to this isle. And in the morn, I'll bring you to your ships and so to Naples, where I have hope to see the nuptial of these our dear beloved solemnized. And thence retire me to my Milan, where every third thought shall be my grave. I long to hear the story of your life, which must take the ears strangely. I'll deliver all, and promise you calm seas, auspicious gales, and sails so expeditious that shall catch your royal fleet far off. The king and his train enter into Prospera's cell. My Ariel, chicken, this is thy charge. 
Then to the elements be free. And fare thou well. Please, you who listen, draw near to my voice. Now my charms are all overthrown, and what strength I have's mine own, which is most faint. Now it is true, I must be here confined by you, or sent to Naples. Let me not, since I have my dukedom got, and pardon the deceiver, dwell in this bare island by your spell. But release me from my bands with the help of your good hands. Gentle breath of yours my sails must fill, or else my project fails, which was to please. Now I want spirits to enforce, art to enchant, and my ending is despair, unless I be relieved by prayer, which pierces so that it assaults mercy itself and frees all faults. As you from crimes would pardon be, let your indulgence set me free. Thank you for joining us for this week's episode of Merced Shakespeare Fest presents William Shakespeare's The Tempest. This week's cast featured Heike Hambly as Prospera, Rachel Battisti as Miranda, Krista Joy Serpa as Ariel, Tracy Sprague as Caliban, Kyle Holman as Ferdinand, Travis Blancett as Stefano, Briston Jones as Trinculo, David Hambly as Alonzo, Harker Hale as Sebastian, Sean Overton as Antonio, Aaron Isaacs as Adriana, Alejandro Gutierrez as Gonzalo, Colton Dennis as the Bosun, and Karen Heidelbach as the narrator. This production was recorded mostly live online. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, please subscribe to the channel so you can get regular updates as new episodes and future projects are released. You can find out more about Merced Shakespeare Fest and how you can support Shakespeare in the community at mercedshakespearefest.org or follow them on Facebook and Twitter. Merced Shakespeare Fest Presents is a production of the Phoenix Podcast Network. For more great art space podcasts, find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. This concludes Merced Shakespeare Fest's presentation of William Shakespeare's The Tempest. But stay tuned to this channel for more information on what's coming up next from Merced Shakes. We want to thank you very much for joining us for this special presentation, and we hope all of you have a safe and wonderful holiday season and a happy new year. We'll see you again in 2021. <laughs>